Giuliani. All right, good evening, everybody. I'm opening up this meeting of the Rhinebeck Central School District Board of Education. It is May 27th, 2014. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of the May 13th, 2014 regular meeting? So moved. By Mark. Second. Seconded by Lisa. Any amendments? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the May 20th, 2014 annual meeting? So moved. So moved by Mark. Second. Second by Lisa. Any questions? Amendments? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We now come to an opportunity for public comment. So if you would like to uh, make a comment, you can raise your hand. I will recognize you. We um, have at the back of the minutes are our, the board policy regarding public participation at uh, our board meeting. So I just ask you to say your name and also to avoid comments of a personal nature about any individual. So, um, <coughs> Susan. <coughs> <laughs> you just, just spend time. Yeah, there you go. Good evening. I'm Susan Van Black, president of the Rhinebeck Teachers Association. I would like to address my comments to the concerns the teachers have regarding evaluation forms, which we had no knowledge of, and which run counter to our rights under Education Law 3012C. We became aware that secretive teacher evaluations were being done when one such evaluation form was found in a teacher's personnel folder. You can imagine our surprise in learning about this unknown evaluation process. While we appreciate that the district later recognized the form did not belong in the folder, we believe the form has no place existing at all. It feels as though there's a duality of organiza organizational structures here in Rhinebeck. One, a board of education and administration we believed operated openly and in concert with the teachers to do the business needed to educate our students and improve our schools a board of education and administration that respected the work we as teachers do. In contrast, there seems to be another board of education and administration who is creating an uninviting atmosphere which shows a lack of respect and a lack of respect and due process for its teachers by collecting secretive evaluations. Just over two years ago, a joint group comprised of teachers, administrators, and board of education members mutually agreed upon an evaluation system referred to as our APPR, which is comprehensive, rigorous, and based on research best practices in education. In starting upon this new pathway in evaluation, the teachers were assured by both the district and by the regulations set forth by the New York State Department of Education that this new process was to be a system where great teaching is recognized and cultivated. However, the secretive evaluation process developed by the Rhinebeck Board of Education does anything but recognize and cultivate great teaching. The secretive evaluation system has also had a negative impact on the vital professional relationships between the teachers and their true evaluators, the evaluators who are properly trained in using our APPR and are certified as, as such by this Board of Education. <coughs> I think we can agree that it is in inherently unfair for the teachers to be judged by an alternate system which we were unaware was being used to evaluate us. This district has set high marks for how our schools value our students, from Rhinebeck High School's Rhinebeck Respects, the Buckley Middle School's developmental designs, to Chancellor Livingston Elementary's responsive classroom. We as the teachers in this district request the same courtesies, respect, and due processes as we afford our students. On behalf of the Rhinebeck teachers, we want to have a respectful and honest relationship with our Board of Education and our administration. As such, we are requesting that the secretive evaluation procedures are stopped immediately. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Any other member of the public want to speak? No. Then, all right. Well, thanks, Susan. Yeah, I, I would th thank you for uh, for coming to uh, share your thoughts with the board, Susan, and for for the rest of you to uh, uh, to support those sentiments. Uh, just a couple of things I'd like to mention, uh, as uh, as anybody who uh, um, has uh, been able to take the time or has the the interest in looking at 
uh, board minutes and uh, and committee minutes and, and board goals. Uh, the board has been actively discussing uh, teacher evaluation and the tenure process for the last couple of years. And uh, uh, so it's it's been a, a topic that the board has spent much time thus far in working through. Um, also, I would mention that, uh, that fairly recently, uh, uh, Susan had raised the, uh, the, the suggestion that uh, we might put together a, a, a small discussion group, study group, whatever, to deal with this issue of communication to the board, especially regarding personnel matters. Uh, uh, just so the rest of you are aware, I want to make you aware that Susan had brought this idea forward and had talked both to Deirdre and to myself and we're both very interested in that and uh, I think it's, it's just a matter of scheduling that, whether we can do that before the end of the school year or at the very start of the coming school year, but that's something that, that we're very interested in having that uh, dialogue with to put some of these issues out on the table and, uh, and have a discussion that's you know that's meaningful and uh, uh, share our different opinions perhaps different opinions on this topic so we, we look forward to that yeah and at the risk of uh, you know I don't we don't want to get into like a back and forth but I'll just say I do appreciate that that you raised this and, and others have been here to support that I think um, we probably do need to clarify what perhaps could be misunderstandings. Um, the board had set the tenure review process as a board goal as a piece of a board goal I think two or three years ago, um, after a situation that um, was a, a personnel tenure decision that, you know, there was a lot of interest on the part of parents and teachers at the very last minute that um, seemed to not work for any party, you know. And so what we were looking at is not to change what our, you know, contractual obligations as well as obligations regarding, uh, you know, the tenure process that are in you know commissioners regulations or in law but rather how it's communicated to us so that we don't have last minute decisions to make either so um, so that's where sort of we were coming from uh, just broadly speaking to avoid having um, a situation where people are waiting at midnight for the board to make decisions that maybe previously we should have had conversations earlier about so we would all uh, be doing teachers administrators and the board of service by staying more on top of these issues. That being said, we obviously need to communicate with each other more about what that's all about. And um, I appreciate the opportunity for us to, for Susan to come to Joe and myself and say, let's let's sit down and talk about this and how we handle concerns around these issues. So we look forward to doing that. Anyone else like to make a comment? All right. Well, thank you. We'll move on to our reports and discussion. And the first item are principal's reports. Gentlemen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, a few things happening at Chancellor. Uh, last, last month I was here, I uh, mentioned that we were doing a, an RSF fundraising the principal for the day uh, for the third year in a row. I wanted to let you know that a young man by the name of Ben Hutchings won. He's a fourth grade student. He's going to be principal for the day with me on uh, on June 5th. Uh, moving down the line, uh, just recently at the end of April, beginning of this month in May, uh, we had our New York State uh, assessments, grade three through five. Um, so a spring concert, so at this time of year, uh, May 13th we had grade four, May 15th we had grade five, um, and then we had uh, May 22nd we had uh, K through three were our parent concerts all leading up to uh, Special Friends Day this past Friday. Um, it looks like um, we had uh, probably the most people come this year than we've ever had in, in quite a while. It was a great turnout. Um, the students put on a, a, a wonderful uh, show. Um, great time for, for everyone. And it was our full time. It was a full, full day of, uh, you know, it was a full day for students. So we'll be kind of taking information from my staff as far as feedback of how that went uh, so we can make adjustments for next year. Uh, I've. I've spoken a couple times over the last couple of months about our, our partnership with uh, Impact Education, gets to bring some hands-on um, science activities for our students. We just finished those up, completed our partnership with those folks. Uh, May 13th, we did Pond Life with grade five. Uh, May 20th, the water cycle with second grade. 
and May, uh, also May 20th, the Web of Life Assembly with uh, all of grade three. So there were three grades that we uh, finished up with. Uh, basically, K through five at some point, I believe, had uh, some sort of exposure to impact education uh, based on what they're working on this year. Uh, we also uh, wrapped up our author's visits for around the book journey for fourth grade. I haven't mentioned that in the past, but we were, we've been working on it as we do every year. A thank you to Arts and Ed for helping us put that together. And uh, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, Book's Journey is a, pro uh, uh, a project we do with grade four students where we have an opportunity to bring artists and illustrators, uh, most of them local, to come in and talk about uh, how they publish a book, everything from the original idea to when you see it on the, on the shelf or online to, uh, to purchase and everything that happens in between. So students get an opportunity to get uh, some insight on that, do some projects around it, um, and they'll be doing their final event on June 20th. Um, April, we also invited IBM engineers to CLS as we do each year. This year, third, fourth, and fifth grade uh, were visited. Uh, and as always, they presented a, a, a group of uh, hands-on activities for those students. Uh, uh, connected to some, some extent to the science they're working on or something they're working on this year. Um, and so I want to thank them for their personal time as well. Quite a few of them come to the building and work with us. Uh, also, uh, just another thank you. I had mentioned it, um, and it went off without a hitch. April 29th, Staff, Staff Appreciation Day, sponsored by the PTSO. Um, I just wanted to use this opportunity to thank them again for, for um, not only putting the day aside and, and working with us in advance, but really the time and energy they put into to cooking and decorating the faculty room, and they spend all day with us there, uh, and it really is a, a, a great experience. So I just wanted to thank them again. Um, if you haven't yet, please check out uh, a Rhinebeck Central School District school uh, district wide art show entitled Art Quest. If you haven't seen the, uh, the the posters around, that's still going on through this uh, Friday um, at Montgomery Row, second level in Rhinebeck, and there are 23 CLS students uh, exhibiting uh, represented in the show. Uh, Another annual event that happens every year, uh, Wall, uh, I'm sorry, Well of uh, an Auction and Dessert Wars, was May 17th. Um, very well attended. Uh, it was at Chancellor, and they that was that's kind of the final fundraiser for the Whale Watch trip, and they were able to uh, raise enough money to follow through with that trip in a couple of weeks. Um, also, wanted to just let you know uh, for our first annual, keep an eye out for our first annual uh, STEM fair. It's this week, Thursday, May 29th, at 6 p.m. at Chancellor in the community room. Um, it is our first science, technology, engineering, and math fair. We have 16 students from grades three, four, and five who worked hard on, on projects like air pressure, dehydration, uh, freezing, plant growth, bridge engineering, and more. So if you have an opportunity, <coughs> join us on Thursday. Um, as always, like I, I mentioned last time, this coming Friday, some BLPT news this coming Friday, red, white, and blue day at, uh, at Chancellor, one of our um, school spirit days. If you remember, we had Crazy Hat Day, it was very successful. Um, and they're currently working on, uh, on our final theme of the year with Common Language Flow about optimism, um, which seemed like a, a good time of year as we enter the last month of school and celebrations, events that, are, that come with that, and looking forward to uh, a new school year in September. Some upcoming events, uh, Whale Watch Group 1 will go on their trip June 1st, Group, group 2 on June 11th. Uh, K2 Field Day is June 5th, 3-5 is June 9th. And as always, we have our grade three rail trail bike trip. That'll be June 20th. That's what's happening. Very good. Any questions? Um, could you just give us any feedback you haven't had all the state tests are done? Any mm -hmm. additional feedback and stuff? Yeah, um, and I got a lot of feedback, actually, uh, ELA and math. Um, very similar in a few things, meaning um, some similarities, some things that they, I guess, listened to feedback from last year and changed one was uh, they did provide what seemed like adequate time. It seemed to be something always in the past, even in, in the test, but not sure really where. Uh, and we have been chosen to do the third, fourth math multiple choice field test in, in about a week and a half. Brett, I have a question about um, uh, the kindergarten registration. Mm -hmm. So the enrollment for next year is looking at like 75 or so? Yeah, uh, uh, 75, I think. We might have one or two that are still in the hopper to be officially registered, but I think we're about right. 75 right now. Yeah. So what are your, th I know um, you and Joe have been talking about possible um, scenarios for how many sections mm -hmm. of kindergarten and, and up through fifth. Um, do you want to just talk a little bit about what you're looking at? Not even, that, you know, just sort of the parameters for that. I mean, at 75 at this point, we usually do Am I correct that usually you get more registrations over the summer? Over yeah. the summer. It's hard to nail down. It, it varies over the last four or five summers that I've been here. Um, anywhere from three to ten, I, 
guess is kind of a mm -hmm. big range. Um, you know, I don't hold me to it, but I think estimates, uh, you know, the hope is that we won't have quite as many with the registration a little bit earlier, a little more um, advertising than we normally had, had done, um, and, and then schedule the students for the dial screening. So, you know, the, that being said, with the, I don't remember exactly the number for the estimate, but it was pretty low this year, and uh, I remember in the high 40s or something we were thinking, um, and this is significantly more. So, with a lot of that being said, I'm, you know, I, I hope we don't wind up with 10, but uh, I'm not thinking any more than three, three to five, maybe over the summer, if that. But yeah, it, historically, we've taken anywhere from three to 10 students uh -huh. throughout the summer. Um, so that being said, you know, with, with the obvious, it wasn't something we budgeted for. Um, you know, it would be difficult to pull monies from a budget to, to be able to do that. Um, so I've been looking at uh, the grade sizes per per grade for next year, um, and just taking a look at what grades are, what incoming grades are, are the smallest, the, the lowest number, first of all, what specific grade is in a lower grade or an upper grade, uh, taking a look at also um, student need in those specific mm -hmm. grades, because that changes those cohorts, it's just different year after year. Um, so uh, I've talked to a few staff members, still kind of working on it, um, you know, also knowing that we're backing up against the June 1st permanent uh, uh, placement letter to, to staff. Um, so right now it looks more like taking a look at some of those grades that have a smaller class size, making them three sections so we can possibly bring mm -hmm. them down to the Right. Brett, could you just mention some of the factors other than just the numbers that go into chunking out X number of classes at a particular grade level? Um, it's, it's not purely a numbers game. I mean, there are other needs that, that you need to accommodate for as, as you're looking at a specific grade level and the overall number of students who are registered just, just so the board has a better sense of some of the other needs that you have to take into account as you chunk those out. So services are a big one. Um, things like speech, uh, OT, PT, um, AIS is, is a very large. We're working with the AIS, the, the AIS team in the building, special ed teachers to kind of really get a, a clear understanding. Even, you know, the needs that maybe students came into their grade this year could very much change through a year's growth and that kind of thing moving to next year. So I think the biggest overall, to, to, to speak to what Joe just mentioned, is uh, do we have a large amount of students uh, from uh, special ed students? Do we have a large amount of speech students? Do we have a large amount of AIS needs, both math and ELA? Um, another thing that I'm keeping in mind is also the, the, the you know, as a result of some, some needs of students moving from fifth to sixth grade next year, um, I'll have a little bit less teaching assistant um, in t teaching assistant support in my building just for the year. And uh, one of the special ed teachers will spend a little bit of time here as well to, to help service our students. So that's also taken into account as far as where those that, that staff is deployed. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's, you know, starting with, and also, by the way, the, the grade level itself, you know, with the idea of, you know, we talked, I think, around this, this table, actually, in the last several years about class size and K1 and 2, and trying to keep it as close to an 11 to 1 ratio, which is, is difficult to do. but. Um, I think uh, keeping that in mind also, and what research has said, um, are all things that I'm, I'm keeping into, mm -hmm. in mind as we, we move forward. Uh, and then working with a few staff members, you know, as far as what is the, what would the movement possibly look like from this grade, from, from a different grade? Does that mean, um, you know, taking a look at teachers' certifications as well, because, you know, that's a, that's a small piece of it. Uh, newer certifications of the last couple of years are very <coughs> specialized, birth to two, one mm -hmm. to six, that kind of so um, I think all of those factors is, is, okay. uh, is, is what we're keeping in mind. I'm working with front locks as well, the two of us are really right. trying to get as much data as possible. Okay, I appreciate you, um, you know, making that effort, especially since this was, you know, much larger than expected sure. for this well, year. Didn't anticipate it. Yeah. Four sets of twins. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> right. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, wow, okay. No. Mark. Um, I know I have it written down somewhere, but uh, could you refresh my memory? How many students do we have registered for kindergarten back in March when we had our budget workshop, if you remember? Oof. Uh, we will probably, I could go back because I actually have some of that data. I would say in the low 50s, probably. Like when okay. we did the initial, like the February registration until late March. Right. Uh, I have to look, but 
probably approaching 60, mid 50s, late high 50s. And are the students that registered since then, are they just moving into the district, or I mean, is uh, there a cor correlation there, or do not you know? that I know? I mean, I meet many of them. We, we just have a process in there. Um, some that just didn't, you know, register in through that window. Um, uh, we have had a couple of move into the district uh, that I know of. Um, be hard to say afterwards, you know, what the you know, variance of kind of those. Okay. Those yeah, I was just curious like. because I'm wondering if you know. In our process next year, if we, there's something we can do to get the word out better, yeah. that it's well, time to register. Actually, just to, to speak to that a minute, uh, my three kindergarten teachers, I sent them all to. They, they came to me a minute, but uh, we were able to send all three of them to a workshop about communicating with preschools, things like that. They came back and met with me and Ms. Locks, uh, and came back with quite a few really good strategies for actually reaching out. Uh, and we kind of made a game plan that July, shortly after school ends. Um, like we have some, uh, Little Feet, for example, really does an outstanding job of sharing with us information. They, they must work with parents and say, hey, we want to forward this to the school, that kind of thing. They're about the only preschool out of about the seven or eight that I know of that, that could possibly feed into our building um, that really go out on their own and kind of send that to us. So they came back with a few checklists, some, some kind of sample, like reach out letters, things like that, some processes at other districts. In fact, Red Hook was there, had some really good uh, solutions. Um, uh, that what they uh, about how they kind of get because they have a K two school how they get uh, you know, people uh, not only into registering the word out um, create some you know communication with uh, um, preschools one of which is kind of meetings over the summer catching up with them uh, involving them in possible orientations things like that's quite a lot of uh, options so that's actually something about a month and a half ago we talked about uh, Fern and I kind of put it on the took everything in. Uh, since then, I've gotten a list, an official list of who we would reach in every one of the, nurse, the preschools. Um, and in July, we're going to do a little bit of legwork, and, and hopefully, they'll have some other things that we didn't see, some insights that we didn't think about uh, as far as getting information out to the community. Because I know we do a press release. You know, one pretty quick and easy thing, to be honest, uh, is just something that we send them specifically when it's time for registration, and kind of do a mailing to them as well, like we do to. To other places we do a press release, uh, Meg does it for us, and things like that. So uh, there seem to be some little things that we just haven't picked up on that we can easily reach out. That that I think that'll help. That'll definitely help. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Uh, I want to start tonight by uh, by talking a little bit about a program that we ran back at the beginning of the month um, in support of our ongoing partnership with, uh, with students and uh, schools and programs in Vermont, around, most of this, around Mafana, Madagascar, uh, and our Our Villages project, which uh, I've been reporting out here uh, over the course of probably the past two years. As you know, last year we took a little hiatus based on uh, the availability of some of the people that we were able to work with, um, and uh, we're, we're back and going strong this year. So we invited uh, Dr. Patricia Wright to speak with our sixth and seventh grade students on May 2nd. Uh, as you know, she's a world famous primatologist. She uh, studies lemurs in Madagascar. Uh, she's the founder of the Central Valbio Bio Research Station in Ranamafana. Uh, she discussed her work in, in the upcoming movie, uh, Island of Lemurs, Madagascar, which is based upon it. She was joined by a number of fellow anthropologists as well as theater actors from the group Zara Ana. Uh, and that's an organization that offers cho children in Madagascar uh, school supplies, uh, goes over and works with students in Madagascar doing storytelling and, and creating some of their own productions over there. Uh, I think it's safe to say that our students were, were inspired by the program. Uh, that all the feedback that I received was very positive uh, in the gymnasium here. Uh, the students work with the, uh, the theater artists and basically they were producing short videos uh, of, of greeting and introducing themselves. Um, and those same theater artists were going over to Madagascar. Uh, in fact, I believe they're over there right now. Uh, they were bringing that over to them. Um, they're hoping that they're going to do a similar type of project and program and bring uh, that information and those videos and, and back to us us here in, in Rhinebeck. 
Um, and we're really looking at this event as an introduction for our students, for uh, our faculty, and a jumping off point. And we're looking to collaborate and create some sustainable, a sustainable sequence of programming throughout the middle school, six to eight. So we have a number of uh, teachers. I think we have four teachers, uh, at least one from each grade level. Uh, they're going to be getting together and doing some curriculum writing and some work uh, in planning a half-day program for uh, all middle school students, similar to the way we run Artists in Action Day and some of the other half-day programs that we run in the middle school. So we're very excited about that. Uh, last week, thanks to the collaboration of Carmela Fountain, Lisa Cole, and uh, Barbara Allstadt in the elementary school, uh, 12 of our students spent three afternoons reading to kindergarten students after school, after our school ended, uh, for National Book Week. Earlier this month, we had 16 students that performed at the uh, NISMA Solo Festival. These talents were on, on uh, display uh, several weeks ago in our spring band concert, um, and they will be on display again uh, on June 5th at our small ensemble concert. Uh, that concert begins at 7 o'clock, and I, as always, invite everyone to attend. Uh, last week, we held our spring choral concert. Uh, again, uh, a fab fabulous testament to uh, to the talent of our students, and uh, you know, I really appreciate the grand finale. Um, again, this year we, uh, we uh, introduced uh, Laura Natalie as, as uh, you know, the conductor of our sixth grade chorus, and she worked in collaboration with Grace Balicki. Uh, but we always do a, a grand finale. We get all students up there on stage, uh, several very talented uh, instrumentalists playing guitar, playing drums, we have percussion instruments out in the, uh, out the audience with some of our younger guests. Uh, it's always very inspiring to see. Uh, tomorrow, our seventh and eighth grade band members will travel to New York City. Uh, they're going to view a performance of Woody Allen, the Woody Allen musical called So the Broadway. And uh, we're still hoping, weather permitting, that uh, some of our some of our band students uh, will be able to perform in small ensembles in Bryant Park. So looking forward to that. This Friday, we we're holding our third annual uh, barbecue and dance, uh, sponsored by the BMS Student Council. Again, we're hoping for good weather on that, but uh, that's always been a fun event. Uh, as I said, this will be the third time that we've done this. Our DJ uh, offers to come early. We have music out on the front lawn. We provide food for the students, and then we invite them in for a dance, a little end of the year celebration. A long-standing tradition at BMS, our seventh grade students partic participated in water days last week, uh, working with instructor instructors at the North Point Estuary Research Center, uh, singing in the Hudson River for fish and studying the water quality of the river. Based on, based on what they found. Uh, also, for the second year, uh, our seventh grade students, uh, you know, the other half, and they, they swapped out days, um, <clears throat> participated in uh, our walking history tour. Uh, I spoke a lot about that last year. Uh, the event uh, you know, was, was just as fantastic this year. We have a number of uh, individuals to thank, too, too numerous, but uh, Henry Frischkin, uh, Martha Tobias, Pat Six Sexton, members of the local Rhinebeck Historical Society, uh, members of the, uh, the local chapter of the DAR all really came together. Uh, I, think there were, I think there were 15 individuals um, that worked in the planning of this day. Uh, again, uh, you know, fantastic experience. Uh, students went from site to site throughout, uh, I think five different sites throughout town, really learning about pre-revolutionary war in Rhinebeck. Our eighth grade science assessment is, uh, is the last state assessment left to complete. Students took the practical last week. They'll take the written exam next week. Um, I also had a reminder, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it anyway, even though I X'd it out after, uh, after Brett mentioned it. But if you haven't had an opportunity to get over, over to Montgomery Row, uh, please do so between now and Friday. There's some great artwork on display over there. On building level planning team news, we've had ongoing conversations all year long. We haven't really, uh, haven't really been able to uh, to wrap our heads around it. Uh, the last time we met this month was our, our last meeting of the year. It seems like we kind of came together with a plan with uh, within the last ten minutes of the meeting, and this is a, a conversation we've been having all year. But we've been talking about parent education and outreach. Um, and so we've come up with a little plan to pilot for next year. Uh, I, you know, I don't have a lot of details yet because, as, as we said, uh, as I said, it came together in about 10 minutes. Um, but what we're thinking about doing, we always run into this issue of getting parents into the building. Everybody's so busy. Everyone's got so many things going on. 
we plan these parent forums, we get a dozen people in here, and typically the dozen people that we get in here are the ones that know more about our programs than we do. Uh, so we're really looking to capture uh, parents on, on that evening that we get most parents here, uh, and that's open house. Um, we don't want to impact our open house program and uh, time with the teachers, and we've really, it's already a two hour long program, <coughs> which we really don't want to cut into. Um, but for those parents that are, are willing to extend uh, that evening just a little bit longer, uh, we're going to look to provide three different uh, age appropriate, developmentally appropriate, and grade specific presentations from 6 to about 625 at the beginning of that evening. And we've had a lot of conversation about what those programs might look like. Uh, obviously, they're going to look a little bit different at each grade level. Um, you know, we talked about uh, kind of you know, stress of middle school and basic needs uh, for our sixth grade students. We talked about a little bit about you know bullying and, and technology and cyber safety for our seventh grade students and perhaps uh, substance use and abuse and, and you know, making harmful decisions for our eighth grade students. Uh, but that was what were really those were our ideas um, around the table. Uh, what we're going to try to do uh, via email for our seventh and eighth grade parents and uh, at uh, the fifth grade parent orientation for our fifth coming into sixth grade parents uh, is, is survey our parents and find out what information they feel that they need. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, hopefully we'll get enough parents uh, to attend a little bit earlier on that evening to make it worth a lot. Uh, just a few, uh, very quickly, a few upcoming events and uh, important dates. As I said, the small ensemble concert is at 7 o'clock on Thursday, June 5th. Uh, on June 13th is a Friday night from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Um, BMS band students will be performing over at Barnes & Noble uh, as part of Elder in Kingston, as part of a, uh, a fundraiser for our, for our band. I invite everybody to go over there to purchase lots of books. Um, on the 14th, uh, Henry Frischkinet, our Anthropology Club, and a number of other students uh, that are just interested, uh, particularly after this program that we held on May 2nd, um, we have a, a group of students that are going to be doing a sale at Rhinecliff Waterfront Day, similar to what we did two years ago. Um, we've had a number of uh, crafts donated uh, that were made by artisans over in Madagascar that have been brought over here by uh, Susan Fendel and, uh, and Dr. Wright donated to, to the school. Um, and we're going to be having a sale over there and trying to educate uh, you know, parents and community members and stuff. Uh, um, I don't have the exact times on that, but it's, it's pretty much all day at running before I close waterfront days down on the Hudson. Uh, June 19th is our moving up ceremony and ice cream social. June 20th is our field day. And uh, June 23rd, we started all over again with our uh, fifth grade parent orientation. <laughs> so Great. Can Any questions? For John. Diane? John asked the same thing I asked Greg. Can you tell me this about feedback? Um, well, I was hoping you would. <laughs> uh, I, I, unfortunately, the feedback that I got from my teachers wasn't quite as positive uh, as, as Brett's. Um, I think we had mixed reviews. I think there was some, there was a feeling that, uh, you know, some of the, uh, the information that surfaced after last year's exams. Um, you know, was taken into consideration. I do think directions were shorter. I think that, uh, you know, I think the task demands were not as unreasonable as they were last year. Um, several of the teachers felt that, uh, you know, much of the material was well above grade level. Um, I got better, uh, I, I think I got better feedback overall on the math assessment than the ELA assessment. You know, math assessment still was, uh, you know, linguistically was still difficult in places. Um, so again, I think there was some, some positive and some negative. Any other questions for Tara? I'll just say, um, you know, I did attend the Madagascar, the, the assemblies uh, for the 6th and 7th grade, and I, I reported on it two weeks ago when we were here and you weren't here, but I really want to just commend the teachers who were involved with that and um, it was really fantastic. You know, the kids seemed really enthusiastic. They were um, excited to participate. It was a great example of doing a project that involved science and environmental stewardship and global awareness and theater arts and um, social justice. They and um, you know really all combined around this theme. And I was just. Um, 
thrilled with the work itself and the possibilities <coughs> for it. And the kids were, I mean, our kids were fantastic and really engaged with it. So, um, yeah, I just commend everyone who's working on that to make it happen because I think there just, just are lots of possibilities. So thanks for doing that. Great. Thank you. Ed? Hello, everyone. I wanted to start with a couple of classroom updates. Uh, yesterday, we all enjoyed uh, the Rhinebeck High School band participating in the parade. Well, last week, Mrs. Natalie uh, had the idea to practice in preparation for the parade by marching uh, over to CLS with Mr. King's knowledge and permission. I hope <laughs> do that. Um, so they walked over um, during the band period, performed the marches for some CLS students, and they came back. We're lucky to have um, our SROs provide police escort there and back, so it was a, a great success. Uh, looking ahead to, to next year, and speaking with Mrs. Natalie, we'd like to uh, expand that probably to a period and have maybe two periods. I think the march became a bit of a sprint. <laughs> and uh, you don't need to get back to class in time. But that, uh, that went very well. Uh, as part of our, one of our English 12 uh, modules uh, in uh, children's literature, uh, some of our seniors enrolled in that course are also walking over at CLS to read to students during their library period, uh, again, with, uh, uh, with great success and uh, with a lot of enthusiasm on their parts. On May 13th, the Dutchess County Board of Elections uh, spoke to our seniors in our uh, government class uh, to inform them about uh, what uh, was required to register to vote to encourage any eligible students uh, to register. During my last report, I noted that two of our students uh, placed, uh, placed first and second in the Skills USA competition in Syracuse, New York. One of those students who placed first in the culinary arts competition will be traveling to the national competition in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, uh, June 23rd uh, to June 27th. Um, I've been speaking with him uh, individually. He will be there for graduation. He may be arriving while graduation is <laughs> we'll have a chair for him on the side. Uh, we wish him a lot of luck, and that's uh, quite an impressive uh, accomplishment. Uh, with the support of our SROs and the PTSO, we held our uh, second annual Safe Driving Week last week uh, in physical education courses um, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, students learned uh, and relearned in many instances the importance of wearing a seatbelt. Uh, they participated in a, a seatbelt contest and with the kind of support of the PTSO, winners of these contests will give them uh, gift cards. Uh, our juniors, want, again, uh, we do this each year, uh, heard from a motivational speaker, John Muller, who was uh, the victim of a, a drunk driving crash, the victim of a TBI, and spoke to our students uh, for about uh, 40 minutes on the importance of making good choices. And uh, the SROs and I met separately with our senior class uh, to talk about uh, the upcoming month all the great events that were happening, and again, the importance of uh, remaining safe on the road. Uh, our junior senior prom was held last Friday at uh, Diamond Mills and Saugerties. The junior class hosted 172 students. 15 of them were alums or school guests. Congratulations to the junior class officers and to their advisor, Mr. Callan, for organizing and hosting just a, a, a wonderful event um, uh, once again. This year, our SROs uh, offered to chaperone and uh, since the uh, locale was out of their jurisdiction, they offered to uh, chaperone in uh, formal attire. Uh, so we were able to have a prom um, and, and not have uniformed police officers present. And it just uh, created a wonderful tone. Uh, the students uh, got to see another side of the SROs. The SROs got to see another side of the students enjoying themselves. So I commend uh, all the participants, junior class, or chaperones. It was, uh, it was, uh, one of the, you know, my, my friends who don't work in schools don't believe it when I say this, but it was one of the, one of the highlights of uh, <laughs> um, this Friday, uh, the building level planning team, uh, with the support of the PTSO again, uh, is going to pile a welcome back barbecue for uh, members of the class of 2013. We sent out uh, hard copy invitations about a week and a half ago. Uh, just recently, we sent out email uh, to the parents of these alums because we know the parents will really Students, uh, to attend and we're hoping that uh, these students will both be able to reconnect with one another uh, with some of the uh, our upperclassmen and the friends at Rhinebeck and uh, as a little book we're asking them we being the BLPT are asking them to fill out uh, a very brief survey on their post Rhinebeck experiences so we can get a sense of what we're doing really well uh, areas we may want to 
improve on and just to find out what it's like after high school for our, for our kids. Looking ahead, uh, we'll have a course concert uh, on May 29th, uh, 7.30. On June 3rd, uh, we will be administering uh, the Common Core Math Regents uh, with, with uh, Mrs. Uh, Sutherland's uh, able leadership and organizational skills. <laughs> Yeah, okay. She's keeping me on track. <laughs> that, that will go like clockwork. On June 6th, uh, the course and the band will travel to uh, Lake Compounds for an adjudication festival. This is the first time that both performing groups have traveled together to this adjudication festival. Uh, we'll have our academic awards program on June 9th. Athletic awards, June 11th. Both of those uh, begin at 7 o'clock. On Friday, June 13th, uh, we'll be sponsoring our Senior Recognition Day. Uh, this is a day in uh, recognition of our seniors' work this year. We'll, we'll ask them to come into school uh, for a brief class meeting, and then they're uh, released uh, uh, to enjoy themselves for the rest of the day. On June 16th, we're going to hold uh, a suggestion of the senior class, a future plans day. And on that day, we're asking seniors to wear some item of apparel or something which will indicate what their future plans after Rhinebeck will be so that uh, all the underclassmen can see uh, the range of opportunities that are available to their peers. Uh, or we begin our final regents exams uh, June 17th, and of course uh, commencement uh, Saturday, June 28th at uh, 6 o'clock. Very good. Any questions for Dr. Atwood? Well, say I, I, I heard uh, positive feedback too about seeing the uh, school resource officers in formal attire, so I think that goes a long way for everybody. Uh, and always there's a lot going on. Thank you. All right. Thanks, gentlemen, for being here this month. We'll move on now to our board committee reports. And we just have one, which is facilities. Dear to Del Bear for those minutes, but she's not with us tonight, so Mark is going to do them. Okay. So we um, met with a, uh, the representatives from a uh, vendor that uh, deals with renewable energy, or in this case, solar power. Uh, financing. Um, basically what they do is they arrange for someone to own a solar uh, generation facility that will be placed on our roof. Um, and uh, we would then be able, in return for that, be able to purchase power uh, through our normal channels at a reduced uh, rate which is locked in for a certain period of time uh, by contract as part of the, uh, the arrangement. Um, so there's certainly uh, more work to be done in, in that area. Um, we, uh, they, they mentioned a couple of other school districts that they're working with, so we're gonna uh, reach out to those school districts and find out more about uh, how it's going for them and um, you know, then decide whether you know, we should proceed. Um, the next step in the process would be for them to, um, you know, have some engineers come out and look at our roofs and decide, um, you know, what sort of generating facilities could be placed on the roof. Uh, also, part of the um, arrangement would be that the some of the work that would need to be done to bring the buildings up to um, the proper condition to place the solar arrays on the roof. Uh, could be done as part of the project, so that would be uh, no charge to the school district uh, as part of the, the deal. So um, we're kind of optimistic on it, but uh, we want to proceed with caution, so um, we're on that to come. Um, Tom also reported about uh, the wireless connections. Um, there's an RFP out for that to, to be work to be done this summer. Uh, hopefully we'll have a plan uh, at our next meeting on June 10th, which is next board meeting. Uh, and also, uh, we're looking toward the uh, building condition survey, which will be done, uh, is due in 18 months, and um, we're doing an RFP to find a uh, architect to do that survey and possibly some other work if we choose that we want to do other work at the time. Okay, thank you. More questions? Yes, sir. Is there any uh, cost component to the district if we were to participate in this energy in the bank uh, project? Um, we 
and if I recall correctly, there is really no cost to the district, other, and uh, the benefit is that we would be able to purchase electricity at a reduced rate over a period of time. Okay. The other benefit, too, is, is before they would allow solar arrays to be placed on our roof, they would ensure that our roofs uh, would get, I don't know what the correct term is, but uh, they would bring the roofs up to like new status mm -hmm. so that we'd have a guarantee, I think it was 18 years, yeah. uh, that you know they'd go up there, we wouldn't have any worries, that they would correct the roofs, fix the roofs, so that they're there for 18 years at least at no cost to the district. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, the solar arrays are not, do not penetrate the roof at all, they stand on it, so it doesn't create any, because that was one of my concerns, is it would create areas in which water would get into the building, and they say they do not do that, that everything is above, do not penetrate the building at all, but they make sure our, our roofs are up to, uh, to conditions so that they are warranted for another 18 years, so it's good, it mm -hmm. sounds like a win-win, but <laughs> we'll still investigate, we'll contact sure. with the other uh, districts that are currently working with them. Okay, thank you. Did they seem to think that based on the positioning of the buildings and where they thought they'd put these arrays that we'd be able to generate a lot of power? Or was that not? Yeah, that, that's, they would also like to use our fields and things of that nature, but we kind of said, no, that, that we weren't interested in that. We don't have a lot of space <laughs> out there and I'm not gonna sacrifice any of our, our open lands for that. But top of the roofs, we're not using them. And if we could benefit from them, We'll investigate. Okay. Terrific. But we thought we should just proceed cautiously because, again, uh, it's sort of a new concept to finance this and to see, you know, um, it, it all sounded good, but it, there are multiple partners involved in all of this. So we want to just get more information before we even begin to let them. The next step would be that they would, as Mark said, go up and see, like, really what kind of condition are the roofs in, what they would have to invest in, you know, where are the right places to position the solar panels. And um, so we have work to do before anything at all begins, at all. I mean, we would, we would need to do a lot of research before even signing any kind of agreement with them. So this is very preliminary, just conceptual, really. Um, I, I think it's great, you know, staying on top of our rising energy costs is, is, is a great thing to do, especially with our upcoming budgets. We perceive we're getting tighter and tighter. I'm just wondering, is Central Hudson, um, is there any way to follow up on what Central Hudson did for us last year and that one to one grant, replacing some of our electricity with LED lights? Could there be a phase two or a phase three or was that a one year program? <coughs> I think they've done all the lighting in our school district as far as that's concerned. I think every single light in now is the low energy LED lighting, exterior, uh, exterior interior, I'm pretty sure they've looked at it and so there's really not too much more that we could possibly do as far as the lighting is concerned. Are there other areas that we can look at? Well, I, we can, I can talk with Sheldon and see if, if uh, if our electric company has some other opportunities because they've usually at a really, either at a very low cost or at no cost, have provided some really nice solutions for us and in keeping our electrical usage down, which of course keeps our cost down. So, yeah, and thanks to, uh, you know, our facilities uh, department for exploring these opportunities, you know, these concepts to keep our energy costs down and uh, so we'll just proceed and keep you guys informed any any other questions about facilities rooms? okay then we move on to the comment section of our agenda uh, good news we heard a lot of good news from our principals reports as usual does anyone have anything else to add I just want to tag team on Brett's um, news about the will of an auction and dessert wars. Rhinebeck probably didn't have an ounce of sugar left on the shelves of the grocery stores. There were 14 teams of kids that participated um, initially when they started. It was just a, a couple of kids that were going to do it, but then 14 teams got together. and. Uh, the organizers got a, a woman who's a baker herself to come and adjudicate their desserts and they had to put up displays and, and 
give a little biographical information about themselves. It was really sweet. They, they had a really good time. Great. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Any other good news? All right. Oh. The budget passed. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's good news for us. Yeah. Very good news. No, excellent news and something we shouldn't take for granted. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks to our community for coming out and yes. overwhelmingly supporting the budget. Yes. All right. Any other good news? We move on to old business. Anything under old business? We now have a second opportunity for public comment. If anyone would like to comment, raise your hand. I'll recognize you. No? Okay. Then we'll move on to other. Do we have anything else? Or other? Okay. Then we move on to our action items. Would anyone like to remove anything from the consent agenda? Seeing none, may I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the following consent items? So moved. By Mark. Second. Seconded by Lisa. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to grant tenure to Patricia Daneman in the tenure area of science, effective September 1, 2014, and may be revoked by the Board of Education up until that time. So moved. By Mark. Second. Seconded by Lisa. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to grant tenure to Matthew Fisher in the tenure area of foreign languages. Effective September 1, 2014, and may be revoked, revoked by the Board of Education up until that time. So moved. By Mark. Second. Seconded by Lisa. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools to grant tenure to Jean Marie Freer in the tenure area of elementary, effective September 1, 2014, and may be revoked by the Board of Education up until that time. So moved. By Mark. Second. Seconded by Lisa. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to grant tenure to Edward Lackey in the tenure area of English, effective September 1, 2014, and may be revoked by the Board of Education up until that time. So moved. By Mark. Second. Seconded by Lisa. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to grant tenure to Daniel Lavazzo in the tenure area of social studies, effective September 1, 2014, and may be revoked by the Board of Education up until that time. So moved. By Mark. Second. Seconded by Lisa. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to grant tenure to Helen Moses Steckman in the tenure area of remedial speech, effective September 1, 2014, and may be revoked by the Board of Education up until that time. So moved. By Mark. Second. Seconded by Lisa. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve an extension of the leave request under the Family and Medical Leave Act from Jennifer Familetti, having commenced on January 3, 2014, with such leave to be taken as paid medical leave through June 26, 2014, the period of disability <clears throat> as certified by a physician in writing to the extent of her accrued sick leave and thereafter through February 2nd, 2015 as unpaid child care leave. So moved. By Mark. Second. Second by Lisa. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. That's unanimous. That motion passes. May I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to adopt the following resolution. Whereas the negotiating teams for the district and the Rhinebeck Teachers Association executed a memorandum of agreement on May 21st, 2014, calling for the creation of a three-year successor collectively negotiated agreement to the one that is set to expire on June 30th, 2011, and whereas legislative approval is required by the Board of Education in order to implement the funding of said agreement, now therefore be it resolved that the Board hereby ratifies the memorandum of agreement between the district and the Rhinebeck Teachers Association covering the period from July 1, 2014 through June 30, 2017 and authorizes the funding of those monies necessary to implement the provisions of the 2014-2017 collectively negotiated agreement. A copy of the memorandum of agreement shall be incorporated by reference within the minutes of this meeting. So moved. By Lisa. Seconded by Second. Laura. Any questions or comments? I have one question. Yeah. Um, is that two, 2011 date correct? Or should that be 2014? I'm sorry. It should be 2014. Right. It was set to expire on June 30, yep. 2014. Good catch. And I would also just like to uh, thank the leadership of the Rhyming Teachers Association and the negotiating team um, for partnering with us to try a negotiation process that was different 
than one we've used in the past. And um, I think in all of our recollection, we're able to come to an agreement ahead of the expiration of the current contract. So um, I think it was a really a good process all around and mm -hmm. hopefully um, sets the stage for continuing good communication. So thank you. All those in favor? That's um, Rosenthal, Schulk, and Lyons, Canteros, and Burns in favor, and abstaining is Fleischauer. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the list of additional emergency conditional substitute teachers and substitute non instructional staff for the 2013 14 school year. So moved. By Mark. Second. Second by Lisa. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. <laughs> and uh, we are not having any executive session, so we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. By Mark. Second. Second by Lisa. All those in favor? That's unanimous. We're now adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.